Luca's former Slovenian coach, Igor Koskakov, has, I probably butchered that, but I tried sincerely, <laughs> uh, has left the Dallas Mavericks. He was an assistant coach on Jason Kidd's staff, and he has gone to Brooklyn to join Steve Nash's coaching staff. Now, that's intriguing for a couple different reasons. Like, first of all, he kind of was the offensive game plan architect here. So, yeah, the offense struggled out of the gate to start this year. But if you set aside, like, you almost have to set aside for Dallas those first two months anyway, like uh, through well, basically December when they were 16 and 18. Because mm-hmm. after that, we know how, how good they were the rest of the season. But the offensive efficiency overall, even including those bad months, was 12th. If you take out those first two months, they were like number five or six. Like they were way better. And that's, that's his system. If there's someone who knows how to maximize Luka Doncic running an offense, it's his Slovenian coach. Like he knows exactly what his strengths are. He's literally been around him for years. He gets it. And so that could potentially be a a big loss because Jason Kidd's a defensive minded head coach, right? Like that's the whole thing is like kid basically brought in and he's got to be fair there's there's an assistant on the staff as well that's more geared towards like the defensive stuff but i think kids fingerprints are more on that just especially looking at his his uh coaching repertoire and history and stuff you see everywhere he went the immediate defensive turnarounds the offense is a different story i think this is kind of like kid trusting a little bit more in uh igor and kind of letting him do his thing and just kind of overseeing it but largely letting um, that kind of come together and adapt as it did. So it could be a potentially significant drawback, but I don't know. Like it's interesting as well to me that Steve Nash is who kind of poaches him away because if you recall, Igor, you know, obviously he, he's won in Europe and he's done all of that, but it was like two or three months, I think before the 2018 draft, he was hired by Phoenix as their head coach. And that didn't end too well. Yeah. He immediately said, you, you got the number one pick. You got me. You hired me. Okay. You want Luca. That's your guy. And they were like, oh yeah, no, that's great. Uh, there's no way we're not taking Deandre Ayton. Right. <laughs> like, and now it's, I'm not getting rid of him. Right. Possibly. And <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, I get that Ayton was Arizona. Like he, he was the, the homegrown kid, so to speak, but it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's not that Ayton's a bad player. He's not, but it's bewildering to me that you hired Luca's coach only to, and had him immediately say, this is what I think you should do. And then you basically said, yeah, no, it's like, well, then why did you choose me? Why was right. I your choice? And then right. he kind of got a raw deal anyway, because they only had him that one year. And it's right. like, wh- what did you think was going to, first of all, what did you think was going to change in a year? In one year. Yeah. Like how many teams make a move like that? And then immediately, go from poverty to like in the mansion, you know, like it, it just doesn't, you have to have, you have to have like big three, big, big three and like three, you know, three bench players that are Mm -hmm. like top players to be able to say those type of things. Or you got to have all the parts, but with none of the, without the, the conductor and then make a trade like the Chris Paul one was in which case they went from, I think 34 wins to like putting a coach like that in the situation like that though. I'm not doing that Wait with, Paul and the new expectations, probably not. No, with uh, yeah, with Igor. Like if I yeah. threw, if if you had a, a ready-made team, I'm not putting the Igor in that situation. Um, the Cavs know, still, tried it with uh David Blatt, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, didn't work. Yeah, that didn't work it at was, all. Like they went terrible. to the finals, but LeBron was literally taking the clipboard out of his hand and drawing up I mean, plays himself. What, right, and that was crazy that they went to the finals with that team. That was not. He was just no disrespect, but he was like a puppet coach. Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing was they hired him before they found out they were getting LeBron back. Otherwise, it's like, maybe you should have waited a month and gotten LeBron's take on that. But uh, yeah, it's regardless, one year with that situation and what little they had achieved was ridiculous. But it's interesting then that it's like, okay, so then Phoenix Suns legend Steve Nash saw basically saw enough of Igor to be intrigued and was like, I'm gonna see if I can get him on my staff. And, you know, I, I don't know the details of his arrangement, his deal, whatever, but I think it's interesting. Like, is it a promotion in this case? Like, is he the number one assistant in Phoenix? Whereas in Dallas, I don't know where he was in that ranking. I don't know, 
but uh, I think it's interesting that uh, one, after one year, he moves on from Dallas. I would not have guessed that, but you know, at the same time, it's, you just had a deep playoff run and you were the hot new kid in town. His offense was turning a lot of heads. And so I think people looked at that and said, like, look at how much spacing he's creating. Look how much floor, like the, the number of wide open shots Dallas created in the playoffs so far outpaced any other team. Like the next closest team was nearly half as many opportunities. Dallas just ran out of gas to actually convert them at the end. So it's like, yeah, obviously Luca gets a lot of credit for that, but it's also, you have to give some credit to the system. So Igor should get his roses for that. And I guess that's enough that uh, there were people clamoring for him. And when you're successful as a team, you're going to have your staff and some of your role players poached. That's just what happens. Yeah, that just what happens. But after a year, that's kind of surprising to me. I mean, mm-hmm. I wonder, um, I mean, you went to a successful organization in one year with Jason Kidd to, to me, an unsuccessful with Steve Nash. He's out there, got to be doing some showing and proving. Yeah, uh, with these nets. So you going to to me and you're going with uncertainty. You don't know what's going on with Kyrie. You don't know what's going on with KD. So you're going in with a lot of uncertainty ben in that Simmons. situation. Uh, ben, I, I mean, you got Ben Simmons, but I, mean, I just mean on, he had man. back surgery. You don't yeah. you still don't know what you, you have. Don't there. know what you have in him. You don't. Right. He was out. So you just went to me to a very stable situation with mm-hmm. Luca. And you just went there. You want to build on that and, and and get even better to a situation like that in New Jersey. I just wonder if there was some underlying things on Dallas's side, because that Maybe. just doesn't make sense to me that you do that after a year and go to successful to to me dysfunction. Yeah, no, I agree. What's bewildering to me is to consider the fact that uh, Phoenix, if they had just taken his advice, would have had a core of Luka Doncic, Devin Booker. Um, Michael Bridges and you know, and Igor as as your coach. And instead, they took Aiton, who they're now apparently reportedly prepared to let walk in free agency, and then spent big to acquire Chris Paul. And while yes, that got them to the finals for the first time since what, like ninety four Barkley ninety three Barkley yeah ninety three I think that's right uh, ninety three with Barkley. Um, it's like, yeah, you got there and you got a two Oh lead. That's great. But like, you basically went all in on trying to win right then you don't acquire a 36 year old point guard. Like Chris Paul was at the time and not have the mentality of like, all right, we got a two, maybe three year window here. Like that's, that's kind of the mindset. Now I know kid won one at 38, but like, again, that's the outlier. Now to be fair to Paul before, you know, the last four games of the series against the Mavericks, he was still playing sensational. He was breathtakingly good in game two, but it's, uh, it's incredible to consider. You could have had Luca Booker bridges and Igor all there and be looking at Phoenix as like, dude, this might be like a golden state type thing. Again, if Devin Booker is your second best dude, dude, that is good. I just don't think he's the guy. If you want to be a serious contender. No, I mean, I feel you on this. Uh, he's he's a he's a great. They want to always do the Batman, Robin, Batman and Robin. If you're talking about Booker, he's a great, super nasty, nasty Robin. But there's a Batman that probably needs to be ahead of him. And like you said, if you had that Luca and him combination, that'd have been fire. Now you look at it, look like they don't even like each other. Right. But you know what I mean. Uh, one can dream and hope and feel uh, what happened. But um, you have seen what the Mavericks did to. You're just bringing it up with the Phoenix. Possibly, um, you don't know if they're gonna what they're gonna do with DeAndre Aiden, mm-hmm. and then even with the Utah Jazz, we were talking about um, behind the scenes how Quinn Snyder basically said, "I'm done," and basically, you know, 